We're going to start with today's lesson. Uh, today is August the 7th, 2022. I'm going to be continuing with the book of Daniel. This time it's going to be chapter 9, verses from 1 to 10. I'm going to start reading the, uh, the text. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of God given to Jeremiah, the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to the servants and the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem are not Israel, both near and far, in all the countries we have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings, our princes and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God and kept our, the laws he gave us to his servants the prophets. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, analyzing verse by verse. As, uh, as we know, uh, Israel had a, a king, King Saul. After King Saul came King David, and then King David came Solomon. When Solomon died, he left his uh, kingdom to his son. His son was not as good as uh, the previous king, so he, uh, by his ruling, he antagonized a lot of people in Israel. So that created a split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was called Israel, and the southern kingdom was called Judah. So the northern kingdom was eventually, because of the sins of the people, was invaded by the uh, Assyrians. The Assyrians invaded northern uh, Israel and took all the inhabitants away to the exile and brought new people into the, uh, into the northern kingdom, what was called Samaritans. The kingdom of Judah in the south lasted for another 100 years, but also because of the sins of the people were invaded by the Babylonians the new, king, new, new kingdom. Babylonians again took these people into the exile to Babylonia, to Babylon. And, uh, and one of the people who were exiled was uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah the prophet wrote that uh, the exile will last 70 years because the Lord has uh, determined the time of the exile. So Daniel was also one of the uh, ones who were exiled. So Daniel was in uh, Babylon and eventually in Persia uh, for about 69 years. So he knew by the writings of Jeremiah that the exile will last 70 years. So the, uh, uh, the exile was coming to an end. So he realizes that and start a prayer to God to uh, remember his people. So reading the, uh, the lesson says, Daniel is aware of the prophecy of Jeremiah that there will be an exile of 70 years because the Jews will be restoring back to Israel. And calculated that this period of time has almost passed. He therefore undertook to prepare himself by fasting for a period of specific prayer on behalf of all Israel, scattered as they were in many different lands. <clears throat> he accepted a divine judgment on God's people, justly inflicted on them for the failure to keep God's covenant, and therefore he confessed on behalf of the nation the sins of unfaithfulness, which have brought disaster on them. Yet, they were the Lord's covenant people, whom he had brought out of Egypt, and Jerusalem was called by his name. On these grounds, Daniel asked for mercy in accordance with the known character of God. Okay, so he decides to pray for all the people, including him, to God, so he, God can remember his people, and fulfill his promise to return the people back to Israel because the 70 years were almost up. So verse one, 
In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler of the Babylonian kingdom. <clears throat> so this era was 538 before Christ, 67 years after Daniel had been taken from Israel. This is the uh, same Darius, the Mede, who that took the kingdom after the death of Belshazzar. The year he was appointed by Cyrus as an as administrator of Babylon, that is immediately after the overthrow of the kingdom of Babylon, which was also the year Cyrus permitted the Jews to return from exile. So this Babylon had taken the uh, kingdom of Judah and all the people there away to Babylon. So they were to spend 70 years. But Babylon, in turn, was invaded by the Middle Persians. So Middle Persians now is a new kingdom that uh, has taken over. <clears throat> now Babylon will take people to exile and leave them there. But the Middle Persian had another attitude, attitude about the prisoners. The Middle Persians thought that it was better for the people that were in exile to return to the homeland and therefore they were more loyal to the kingdom. So that was the, the attitude which was different for the Babylonians. <clears throat> so verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of God, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. So Daniel understood both from Jeremiah the prophet and also from the Pentateuch. Pentateuch was the uh, Jewish scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures translated into, uh, into Greek because a lot of people were throughout the world and the Greek was the most common language. It's the same as English right now <clears throat> in our world. Uh, so Daniel had a Pentateuch, of course, the uh, writings of Jeremiah. And uh, we can see that uh, the, the prophet Daniel did not disdain to study the word of God. So he knew what was going to happen because he studied the word in the same way that we do. We study the word of God, especially the book of Revelation, and we know what's going to happen in the future because we know the word of God. <clears throat> so according to the word of God, the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. He knew that it was about time for the desolation of Jerusalem to be finished. Daniel's own captivity occurred in 605 B.C., before Christ. It was now 538 BC, some 67 years after the conquest. So the period of captivity was almost over. Hi, James. <clears throat> so Daniel saw a part of Jeremiah's prediction fulfilled by the vengeance which the Lord had taken upon the house of Nebuchadnezzar. But he saw no appearance of the deliverance of the Jews which the prophet foretold. This was a cause of his uneasiness and a motive of his prayer. So Daniel understood that the Babylonians had been taken away, had been, taken, had been invaded by the uh, Middle Persians. That part of the prophecy was fulfilled. However, the return of the Jews to Israel, that still was up in the air. So he was concerned about this, and uh, he was worried. And that was the cause of his uneasiness and the motive of his prayers. So, verse 3. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting, and in sackcloth and ashes. So uh, God's promises in general are conditional, not intended to supersede, but to excite and encourage the prayers. This was especially the case with regards to God's promise of restoring the Jews from captivity after 70 years. When God promises you something, that doesn't mean that you're not going to pray for it. No, it's to give you an incentive so you can pray for it. <clears throat> when uh, God gave Joshua the land of Canaan, Joshua did a lot of praying before they invaded, even though God had given them the, the, the land to them. Here we see, we see Daniel comply with the condition of prayer. He sought into the Lord with all his heart. And there's no doubt that he excited others to do the same. And the Lord was fond of him. And he says, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. You know, uh, this custom was taken from Egypt. In Egypt, when you were sad about somebody die, you put old clothes, ragged clothes, and then you, uh, you don't eat, you fast, and then you put ashes on your head to make you look even worse than you are. Like uh, telling the people, I am in mourning, I'm deeply sorrow because my relative has died. So that was a uh, external uh, showing of when people was uh, really sad. In the book of Job, you see a lot of that. So. In talking of humiliation, sorrow for the sins, and grief for the duration of the captivity, 
the ritual use of fasting is, loose, is uh, coming from Zechariah 717. Sackcloth, the not a mourning, and together with ashes, symbolize a penitence which Daniel came to represent his people before God. That was something that uh, the Israelites acquired from Egypt. So let's go to verse 4, uh, Nico. I pray to the Lord my God and confess, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. So Daniel start praying to God. I pray to the Lord my God. Daniel prayed not to idols, nor to angels or saints departed, but to the Lord God of heaven and earth, who is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, a God hearing and answering prayer, and to whom he directed his prayer, not only as the God of nature and providence, but as his own covenant God and Father. And confess, in every prayer must be a confession, not only of the sins we have committed, but of our faith in God and dependence upon him, our sorrow for sin and our resolutions against it. It must be our confession, the language of our own convictions, and what we ourselves do subscribe to. And he said, Lord, the great and awesome God, a God, this is a God in whom our duty is always to stand in awe. What's awe is admiration, amazement, astonishment, wonder, and who is well able to deal with the greatest and most terrible of the church's enemies, who keep his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. The faithfulness and covenant of love of the Lord show up in contrast with human fickleness and disloyalty, and appropriately introduce a prayer that depends of his appeal and reliability on the word of God. Now let's go to verse five. Uh, So he starts by saying, we have sinned. Through Daniel was alone, he spoke in the name of the people in general, no doubt recounting the long series of crimes in a nation which had proceeded the captivity and which was the cause of the ruin of the city and temple. And he says, and we have done wrong. This varied the forms of expression and designed to give intensity to what he says. It is equivalent to saying that they have sinned in every way possible. The mind in the state of true repentance dwells in its sins and recounts the various forms in which iniquity has been done, a multiplied expression of regret and sorrow on accounts of the, the transgression. We have been wicked and have rebelled. Daniel puts in himself among the body of the people as being a member of it and as of well knowing he was not without sin and therefore willing, willingly took part on the blame. This refers to sins of actions, words, and thoughts, which they proudly and arrogantly committed. He says, we have turned away from your commands and laws. Yes, they had the, uh, the part or departure of the moral and positive nature, which were imposed by the law of Moses as a rule of the conduct. And from, the, from this, they have fallen off. Verse 6, uh, Nico. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, spoke in your name to our kings, our, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Okay, so God <clears throat> sent his prophets to his people with his authority over them, for they were God's ambassadors, and came to them in the Lord's name. The message delivered by these ambassadors of God were to all sorts of persons, high and low, to show that none could plead ignorance or excuse themselves with that, since all had sufficient warning and instruction, and also to observe that the sin of rejecting the two prophets of God was a universal among them, and they were all guilty of it. So God has sent through many years, Jeremiah, Isaiah, prophets, prophet after prophet, to warn the people of Israel, if you keep on sinning, you're gonna be punished. And all these years, people did not listen, just did what they wanted to do. So finally, the punishment came, the exile. So Daniel is saying, we are guilty, we know what we've seen, we acknowledge that, now we have paid the price, now Lord, be patient with us, and be merciful with us, and bring us back to our land. So Romain, uh, verse seven. Mm. 
Okay, he started by saying in verse 7, it's a long verse. It says, Lord, you are righteous. So, yeah, the absolute righteousness of God appears distinct and clear despite of the punishment from which the nation suffered. Punitive justice belongs to the, to the Lord, nor should be any complaints about his judgment. He, he, he warned the, the people, which are righteous altogether, nor had the prophet Daniel or any of his countrymen any reason to complain of the evils brought on them. The desolation of the land, city, and temple, and their captivity and exile to a strange land. Look, they, can, they had not complaints at all, could not complain. And he continues, but this day we are covered with shame. Yeah. Disgrace and shame belong to them. And the contempt of ill treatment they have met with that have been justly deserved. And he continues, the people of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, to all who once dwelt in the land flowing with milk and honey, and now in a strange land for the sins, and to every inhabitant of that renewed city of Jerusalem, the metropolis of the nation, the seat of the kings of Judah, the city of the great king where the temple stood, and divine worship was performed, but now lay in ruins through the iniquity of his in inhabitants, and therefore had just reason to be ashamed. And he says, both near and far, yes, and unto all, all Israel that are near and are far off because they have trespassed against you. They have been humiliated for the wrong they have done. This includes not only people of Judah, the southern part, but Israel also, the northern part, northern tribes, which have been deported by the Assyrians. In all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you, all the kingdoms and countries where they were dispersed for the trespass against the Lord, particularly in worshiping heathen gods and other acts of idolatry. Verse 8, uh, Nico. We and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord. Because we have sinned against you. Okay, the feeling of shame is repeated to show how much the mind of the prophet was affected with it and to focus in the minds of others, as well as to suggest that he wanted words fully to express that shame that everyone ought to take to themselves. Say, so, Lord, we have, because we have sinned against you, all of us, the whole people, the whole people, high and low, rich and poor, the rulers of the rule, all have been part... <laughs> Hold on a second, let me repeat this. <clears throat> Lord, because we have sinned against you, all of us, the whole people, high and low, rich and poor, the rulers of the rule, all have been partakers of the guilt. All were involved in the calamities consequent on the guilt. As all had sinned, the judgments had come upon all. And it was proper that the confession should be made in the name of all. So everybody has seen, so he was praying not only for himself, but from everybody. This is a collective guilt. There is no reason to apologize now, just uh, throw ourselves to the mercy of God. To be merciful. Uh, Romain, verse 9. <clears throat> the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Yes, the Lord our God <clears throat> is merciful and forgiving. Not only does righteousness belong to him in the sense that he has done right and that he cannot be blamed for what he has done, but mercy and forgiveness belong to him in the sense that only he can pardon and that these attributes are of his nature. Even though we have rebelled against him, this is mercy with our Lord and forgiveness with him, even for rebellious ones. That is, our only hope now is in his mercy, for we have sinned and forfeit all claims to his favor. He is merciful and has forgiven our iniquities. Since he has spared us and not destroyed us, and now is about to put an end to our captivity, according to his promise. And if he had not mercy on us and did not forgive our sins, we would have been perishing them. And there would have been no hope of salvation for us. Verse 10, Nico. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us to his servants, the prophets, Okay, he started by saying, we have not obeyed the Lord our God. The word of God, and not the word of men, that was spoken by his prophets, should have been attended to and obeyed to. For despising that, and them, was interpreted as despising the Lord. And he says, or kept the laws he gave us to his servants and prophets. It was God's mercy, not only to give his people his laws, which he did solemnly by Moses, but he said it plainly and powerful before them as a rule to walk, and a rule and a path to walk in. 
and not to do this was very sinful on them and greatly displeasing to him. So the rebellion against God, the refusing to hear the voice of the Lord through the prophets, the transgression of his law, which all Israel of the 12 tribes were guilty, has brought the punishment on the whole people, which the law of Moses threatened against transgressors. The thought is that Israel was in no position to mend the relationship, and her only possible plea was the character of God. So let me say something before uh, we conclude the lesson, because you uh, missed this part. You know, the, uh, as we know, um, Israel had uh, three kings at the beginning. What? First king was Saul, and then after Saul came uh, David, after David came Solomon. And when Solomon died, he left uh, the kingdom to his son. But his son was not a very good king, so he antagonized the people of Israel. And that, as a consequence, the kingdom was split in two parts, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Northern kingdom was called Israel, the kingdom was called Judah. And they did not obey the Lord. And the prophet said, obey the Lord, or you're going to be punished. So eventually, the northern kingdom Israel was invaded by Assyria. They took over, and they took all these people to exile, and they brought other people in, okay? And those people were in the northern kingdom, they called the Samaritans, all right? So these people were, were there. And then the Judah lasted for another 100 years. But again, they did not obey the Lord. So they were invaded in, in turn by the Babylonians. The Babylonians were taken to exile. But among the exile was Daniel and was Jeremiah. And Jeremiah wrote that the exile, God told them, it was going to last 70 years. So Daniel now is being in captivity for 67 years. So he's saying, you know, the time of the exile is coming to an end. So he prays to the Lord. That's what he starts. He's, the title of the lesson is Daniel's prayer. So he starts praying to the Lord. Lord, I know we sinned. I know we messed up. But now we pay our price. Now it's 70 years, almost. Now I see that you deal, deal with the Babylonians. Now they're out, okay? But now uh, what about returning to Israel? When is that going to happen? So he was very uneasy, uneasy about things. So he started praying in his name and the prayer of everybody, okay? That's what they were praying. So to conclude the lesson, it says here, so in this remarkable prayer of confession, Daniel associated himself with the sins of his people 32 times. He approaches God on the basis of his royal love and his covenant with Israel, confesses their sins, acknowledges their deserved judgment, and supplicates God for his mercy. So this is a prayer of repentance for our Israel past sinfulness, but it's also a prayer of confidence, for God was about to overthrow the Babylonians mm -hmm. and allow the Jews to return to their homeland to rebuild it. The 70 years of captivity were almost up, and glorious things lay ahead. Daniel confessed that Israel had departed from the word of God, has disregarded the prophets of God, and despised the Lord himself. So that concludes our lesson. Um, any questions about it, you guys? They, they only left a few people to uh, take care of the land, very poor people. But all the uh, structure, the, the leaders, the army, those, they were taken on. So they didn't want anybody to rebel, and they didn't have army to rebel with. Only a few people, poor people, to mend the land. And of course, the overseers were from Babylonia. Okay? And, uh, but when the, when the Middle Persians invaded and took over Babylon, they had a different idea about captives. Babil Babylon would take captives and just put them in exile and forget about them. Middle Persians had another idea. They said, uh, if we return these people to their homelands, they'd be more loyal to us than they not. So they, it was uh, politics. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing. So that's why they made a point to returning them to Israel. Not only that, but paying for their fare and all that. But not everybody returned to Israel, okay? Yeah. A lot of people stay, stay in Babylon because already 70 years, they bought property, they got business, they, some of them were rich, and some of them were all around the diaspora, they call it. And some of them already speaking other languages. A few people returned to, uh, to Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. So next week, we're gonna conclude with the prayer of, of, uh, of uh, Daniel. Any questions? Okay, let me conclude this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to share your word. We thank you for allowing us uh, another day of life. Thank you for giving us the ability to come here to this church 
and to share the word of God and to hear the, the sermon of the pastor. Let the rest of the day be a blessed day. Also, the rest of the week be a blessed week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, let me finish this.